around this time of the year, everybody starts saying they're gonna lock in. New year, new That's me. True. Well, what you really need is good nutrition. So I'm gonna show you some true. options today at Costco that are These actually aren't it. locked in healthy. <laughs> Let's dive in and find the real good stuff at Costco. Come on. Let's do it. These chicken skewers are 18 bucks and you're getting 168 grams of protein. But what I love, seed oil free. They use extra virgin olive oil. This could be really good for a kid's lunch. Yeah, this reductionism is always interesting. Classic reductionism. What matters is not if an oil comes from a seed. Because coconut oil is a seed oil, but that's a seed oil that's way better than olive oil. What matters is the makeup and the processing of the oil in terms of the makeup of the fatty acids. So olive oil is still 15% linoleic acid if it's real. And linoleic acid extra in, outside of the food matrix goes to arachidonic acid, which then raises prolactin, which suppresses the thyroid. It's higher in deuterium, which slows down the nanomotors of the mitochondria. You know, grass-fed beef is 2% linoleic acid. Olive oil is 15%. Coconut oil, which is a seed oil, that's higher in, you know, medium chain triglycerides, it's higher in saturated fat, which that actually improves your thyroid. That improves your metabolic rate. That improves your ketone production. And that's a seed oil. That's more stable. Saturated fats are more stable. When they're incorporated into the cell membranes, it makes them more resilient. They're less prone to lipid peroxidation. Just because it's olive oil from a fruit doesn't make it better than all seed oils. We're looking at this omega-6 linoleic acid outside of the food matrix in isolation. That's what we're looking at. And it's too high in olive oil. It's still prone to oxidation, especially when heated. So this is just classic reductionism instead of looking at the actual makeup of the oil. Or just an on-the-go snack, easy work. You need some fermented foods in your fridge. Food you don't. Foods like sauerkraut feed your gut bacteria. This one. Anything you eat feeds your gut bacteria, by the way. It's organic, and this is nine bucks for this giant thing. Ingredient check definitely passes. Cap cabbage seed. Notice how it says five calories because there's no macronutrients there. You're paying $9 for a bunch of plant matter that's fermented. Salt, garlic, raw organic sauerkraut, definitely cop. This is probably the best. How long have our genes been exposed to sauerkraut? Some people's genes, not at all, maybe a few thousand years. How long have our genes been exposed to clabbered milk? 13,000 years. How long have our genes been exposed to scavenged meat? Four and a half million years. So, according to the Darwinian principles of evolution, according to biological adaptation, genetic adaptation, we're more adapted to eating fermented animal foods rather than fermented cabbage. So I'd argue because we don't understand the gut microbiome, it's a safer bet to go with the foods that we're most adapted to genetically. And again, you do not need fermented foods, by the way. It's false. A steal you will find on real Parmesan ever. About 16 bucks per pound. Parmesan can supply with vitamin K2. It's also really- Yeah, the MK4 version is good. Rich in protein. You should sort of always- Case Casein proteins. They're- all casein proteins, even A2, there's A1, A2 casein proteins, they're all addictive due to the caseomorphines, unlike beef. And they also are slightly inflammatory compared to beef. It's not an optimal food, but. Let's have some Parmesan handy. When you get like that little snack hungry. At least it's raw, but all cheese is still heated, so. Dude, I'm telling you, just eat a chunk of this. You're gonna get a bunch of vitamins, minerals, and protein. Have you tried this? Let me know. It's winter, so yeah, you might wanna be sipping some bone broth. Now, while the beef one is definitely better than the chicken one, in my opinion, you still get a lot of the benefits from the chicken one. And this brand is real. You can see like when you pour it out, it's thick. And that's what we want with bone broth. 10 bucks for a two pack, really good for your gut health. Supplying some of that glycine that's just not commonly found in our diet. Get these. These boulder. Yeah, I'm not opposed to those. Organic chicken and wild rice soups aren't that bad. Now that well, then again, it's <sighs> stored in plastic. It's really bad, but... Not perfect in my opinion. Let's look why. First of all, you see some real broth in here, which is great. And this is seed oil free with extra virgin olive oil as the fat. There's just... Once again, reductionism. That's still prone to lipid peroxidation. That's still linoleic acid outside of the food matrix. You know, linoleic acid in an avocado, for example is different than linoleic acid in an extracted avocado oil. That extract that extraction process raises the deuterium. It makes it more prone to lipid peroxidation. It makes the shuttling into the cell membranes different, less structurally sound. It's just reductionism. Like you're asserting that these fruit plant oils are so much better than seed oils. Why? Okay, they have more monounsaturated fatty acids. 
And it, again, plant monounsaturated fatty acids, they reduce one inflammatory pathway, they raise another one. Animal products only reduce. Not a lot of chicken in here, I think, because you're talking per serving six grams of protein. But Horrible. What I could see is getting like a rotisserie Horrible. chicken, getting some of that bone broth, and then like, you know, you can kind of- Chicken's deficient in micronutrients compared to beef, by the way. Doc. It also has more linoleic acid than what we're adapted to. You know, it can be up to 15% as well. Clear this up and make like a really big chicken and rice soup, $13. But one thing on that linoleic acid, the omega-6 in animals, is way better than outside of the food matrix because the shuttling into membranes is completely different. The how prone it is to oxidation is completely different. 50 cents, I'd get these. Lesser Evil has these big ass bags of popcorn in stock at Costco. I think these are a great option. They are seed oil free. They're made with coconut oil. Moving. That's a seed oil, idiot. Coconut coconut oil is a seed oil. But guess what? It's a seed oil that's better for you than the fruit oils because of its uh, medium chain triglycerides, because of its saturated fat content, because of its uh, PUFA content. God, this guy, this guy is not educated. And why is this a must buy? Popcorn is complete deficient of everything you need. It has, it has you know, still, it's a carbohydrates without any nutrition with them. It has phytic acid, why? And I don't serve your girl that seed oil filled popcorn, man. That's filled with seed oils, idiot. <laughs> They're just a better version than most seed oils. Come because it's not, if it's a seed oil, if it's not, it's about the composition of the oil. My God. Come on, get some of this. Sweet potato chips with three ingredients. Garbage. Sweet potato. Avocado oil, that's not good. There's avocado oil, sea salt. Definitely will be copping these. Five dollars and eight. Notice how the seed oil, which was coconut oil, is better than avocado oil, which is a fruit oil. Because it's not about the label, bro. I won't say it anymore. It's not about the label. It's about the composition of the oil. 89 cents for this. Tallow would be the best giant bag that's a good deal now this video is going to mostly be on like products not just like fruits and stuff but i you know these dates are amazing organic dates 12 dollars. high in deuterium very dense of sugar very deficient of nutrition being amino acids fat soluble vitamins things like creatine taurine very deficient for this big thing dates supply you with a good amount of boron boron helps lower shbg levels just like something good to have that more reductionism you're begging the question that you'd want to interfere with your genetic set point of sex binding hormone globulin, given you're following a proper diet. It's sort of like the begging the question when people imply that fiber is good because, you know, beta glucan can lower your cholesterol. It's begging the question that lowering your cholesterol with fiber is good. Do we want to mess with our genetic set point of cholesterol, which the body is tightly regulating? Do we want to mess with our sex binding hormone globulin by eating something unnatural that will tweak it? It's more reductionism, like this mechanism's good, this mechanism's bad. Reduction cruise medicinals, bro. It's it's insane reductionism. It's what you see out of many of these cults, like Ray Pete, even Aginus. It's not smart. That you need to get in your diet. And I love these, like a pre-workout snack. I mean, there's so many things you can do with these. Absolutely delicious. 12 bucks for all these? That's a cop. I'm actually not going to throw these into my recommendations. Now, they're not like bad or anything like that. A lot of companies use this paleo, you know, terminology and they try to get you, you know, looking at it, which they got me. And while I'm not completely opposed to a little bit of coconut sugar, the ratio of sugar in here to protein is just not it for a meatball. Six grams of sugar to 13 grams of protein, that, that ratio ain't ratioing, man. So I'd probably skip on these. Some coconut water. This is a good deal. We're talking organic coconut water. I like it. Coconut water is very high in deuterium. It's, uh... It does have electrolytes, has lots of electrolytes, which is good. I'd, I'd prefer it over any other sugar water. But again, I mean, we don't really want the body to be metabolically flexible between carbohydrates and fat oxidation. It's best to choose one. So I'd say go carnivore or go repeat. Like you have to choose. It's going to be best for your metabolism, for your mitochondrial efficiency, for your thyroid, if you go one way or the other.
there are no other ingredients in here. While I don't panic, if a coconut water company uses like a little gram of sugar or something like that, I just think, why? Coconut water is sweet already. I love throwing a scoop of our electrolytes in some coconut water. Makes a great little pre-workout drink. So yeah, <laughs> definitely getting this. I do like these Suja immunity shots, but the really good ones are actually just the pure ginger ones. They just have a little bit of lemon. And How long have our genes been exposed to ginger shots? That's all I'm going to say. How long have our genes been exposed to the flesh and fat of ruminant animals? Four and a half million years. How long have our genes been exposed to ginger immunity shots? That's all I need to say. And people who understand the principles of Darwin, the Darwinian principles of evolution, biological genetic adaptation, they'll understand what I mean. That's all you need to know. Cayenne, I believe. So I honestly don't know if these have that like crazy ginger taste. Vitamin D, no. K, K, K1, yes. K2 in the MK4 version, no. And that is what- you Vitamin B6 in the active form, no. B12, no. So misleading. Probiotics, everything is a probiotic. Does that mean it's indicated? No. Reduction is- this, everything in nutrition's reductionism now, isn't it? It's insane. What you want. Talking to people like Dr. Justin, when you start getting that tickle in your throat, there's a whole protocol you can do, but one of those things is like a real ginger shot. Best way would be to press your own ginger juice. Second best way is probably a real pure ginger. How long have our genes been ex uh, exposed to fresh pressed ginger juice? Shot like from Suja. And then maybe third best way, something like that. But these are good to have in the house for cold and flu season. Why not? Now I'm showing you this one. Also, it's acidic and plastic. For all the matcha lovers out there, me personally, I'm a coffee guy. But this is ceremonial grade matcha, 22 bucks, and matcha is totally valid. Compounds in matcha like EGCG have potent anti-inflammatory effects. Also, you're going to get some L-theanine in there, so that's going to help- Mechanistic speculation. Balance the caffeine, you're going to feel a bit more- Do you think caffeine is anti-inflammatory? Do you think like a 30%, we typically see a 30% uh, reduction in blood flow to the brain when you have caffeine in the system? Do you think a vasoconstrictor is conducive to optimal health? Smooth. So do you like matcha? Let me know below. I mean, sometimes my girl will order it. She's mostly a coffee girl. I drink coffee in the morning, but people love- Coffee is quite high in fatty acid. It has a positive charge. And a lot of your minerals like heme iron have a negative charge. So phytic acid can strip you of magnesium, heme iron. A lot of people become anemic from too much coffee. It's uh, not conducive to optimal health for sure. They're matcha, so I can't hit on it. Now also, the vasoconstriction is not great. Now, I'm going to throw you all something that I actually don't really eat. But the reason I'm going to talk about Tate's in a second is because, guys, you can't get these and put them in your household. You need to stop this. I'm not telling you you need to be as strict as me. And if you have, you know, some... You don't seem very strict, really. 10-year-old kids need to have them not eat cookies. But this isn't a cookie. This is a mixture of sugar and canola oil. There's also red 40 in here and they can't even get the flavor right. So they need to put a bunch of artificial. Yeah, that will destroy your thyroid and your metabolic function. Flavors in there. When you look at a brand like Tate's, lots of arachidonic acid, high prolactin levels, lots of glycation. Oreos are one of the worst things you could ever eat. Like, yeah. this isn't something I'd be eating a lot. There's still going to be like 12 grams of sugar in one of these cookies. But the ingredients are... Well, is sugar good or bad? Because remember, you just recommended dates and natural sugar. No, no, no. The molecular structure, the way it interacts in the body is equivalent. You know, there is fiber, which is an anti-nutrient. It will slow down your absorption of the glucose and fructose. But is fructose and glucose in the diet good? Especially when paired with fats. That's the question that you have to make up your mind on. Because, yeah, these these probably have gluten as well, which is a lectin that can really cause an autoimmune response, that can cause IBS, lots of gut irritation. So that's already a reason you should never eat these either. You shouldn't have lectins in the diet. Also have phytic acid as well. But the, the sugar content itself you know, is sugar good or bad? Because the dates have more sugar than these likely. You know, dates are one of the highest sugar fruits. They're dry, they're condensed sugar. So is that good or bad? You're not being consistent here. Real, they're recognizable. I could hand this to my grandma and she'd be like, yeah, those are the same type of ingredients that were in cookies. Flour, chocolate chips, Flour is a big issue. Butter, sugar. So if you're gonna eat cookies, get something with recognizable ingredients, and this brand does a good job at that. And now we have come to probably one of the most important things in the video. Organic, plain, Greek. Really low quality. Yogurt yeah. for $6.89. This whole- 
pasteurized, so less lactoferrin B12. It's not fresh. Whole thing is going to give you 144 grams of protein. Not A2 either, so it's more inflammatory in terms of the protein. What you do? At <laughs> Fat sitting in plastic as well. At night, if you have a sweet tooth, you Garbage. put a few scoops of this into a bowl. You put a little bit of honey. You put a little bit of frozen fruit. You put a scoop of our Santa Cruz Paleo away. You're going to have a sweet bowl of deliciousness that's going to give you 30 or 40 grams. Again, there's a cross inhibition of oxidation between fats and glucose. You know, if you're there's an inertia as well when the body is switching between fuel sources. So if your body is used to oxidizing glucose, you'll have fatty acids often build up in the bloodstream when you mix high concentrations. When your body is used to oxidizing fat, then you'll have glucose pulling in the blood. So that's where, you know, Ray Pete was kind of right in that sense. And, you know, Kempner was kind of right with the rice diet. Like, yes, a rice only diet can reverse diabetes because you're downregulating the Randall cycle. You know, we see diabetes, we see these insulin issues coming from lots of fats and sugars mixed, particularly polyunsaturated fatty acids mixed with sugar. So why are you adding all the sugar to a food high in fat? It doesn't make any sense. Some protein. You're going to get healthy probiotics in there that are going to help your gut bacteria. Greek, we don't know that. Greek yogurt is dialed in. You better be getting this. People always ask me for soda alternatives because if I catch you buying soda, I'm going to offer you some money to quit that nasty habit. Spindrift makes... Let's go. Let me know what you... Ah, oh, man. I don't like this video at all. By the way, I don't know if you guys did that. I did not like sleep well. So I'm, I'm trying my best here, but... Ah, oh, man. This is not a good video. Just so much reductionism. Oh, what's a, what's a seed oil? What's a fruit oil? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the label. It matters about what the food is, how it's actually interacting with us biochemically. You know, is it high in oxidized linoleic acid? Is it high in saturated fat and medium chain triglycerides like coconut oil is? That's a seed oil. Who cares that it's a seed oil? Who cares what label we put on it? Look at what it does. That olive oil is still going to flood your cell membranes with linoleic acid cause you to have extra arachidonic acid. That's the conversion. And then high arachidonic acid is going to raise your prolactin, which suppresses the thyroid. That's your metabolism, you know? And these are the same people. These people also promote lots of beta carotene to make your, you know, skin orange. And that's a sign of poor thyroid as well. You know, beta carotene is not good for your thyroid in high amounts. It also blocks real vitamin A. There's all this, if you're actually turning orange from something like beta carotene, that's a sign of a horrible thyroid function. That's really bad, by the way. And you have these people, I don't know if he specifically, I'm kind of on a tangent. It's just something I see. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I'll end it off there. Uh, if you want to actually improve your health, little promo, check out my school community. I know my shit. I promise you that. And you'll learn really what to do to actually optimize your health and looks. And a um, bit disappointed by this reductionism here. I wouldn't pick up most of these items whatsoever. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching.